Good afternoon. Hello and thank you for joining us today. My name is Marion Harrison, Senior Lecturer in Fine Art at Leeds Beckett University, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to today's Inside Out Talk, No Screen, with Dutch graphic designer and pioneer of bookmaking, Irma Baum. The mission of our prestigious Inside Out Lecture Series is to bring the best minds of our generation to inspire and support the work students and staff do across the School of Leeds, the Leeds School of Arts, sorry, at Leeds Beckett University. Irma is joining us today from her studio in Amsterdam, where she will share with us some of the books she has made and expand on her ideas and the processes involved in making her books. Irma currently has an exhibition, Book Manifest, at Allard Pearson in Amsterdam and forthcoming retrospective exhibition at the Design Museum in London later this autumn. This talk is co-hosted with my colleague, Adrian Winterburn, Senior Lecturer in Graphic Design here in the Leeds School of Arts. And the format for this talk will be an informal conversation hosted by Aidan. And we invite you to send questions uh, on slido.com using the hashtag LBU-IB. So I will now hand over to Aidan to introduce Irma and the talk. Thanks, Aidan. Hello, uh, yes, I'm Aidan Winterburn and um, as Marion said, I'm a senior lecturer in graphic design here at Leeds Beckett University. And I am also really honoured and delighted to be able to introduce today's lecture, No Screen with Irma Baum. Um, and if I were asked to show, to show someone who knew very little about this discipline, graphic design, what the capabilities of this discipline might be, what potential this form might have in its combination of typography, image, format and context. I think I would undoubtedly show them the work of and the books of Irma Baum. In their sheer materiality, their playfulness with form, their bravery and challenging sense of design, these books for me say everything about the power of graphic design to visually communicate and to interpret the world. So Irma is perhaps the foremost book designer, or shall we say bookmaker, rather than book designer, uh, in the world today. And her work, which spans more than 30 years, is collected by such as the Museum of Modern Art in New York and Pompidou Centre in Paris. She's won numerous, numerous awards for her book design, sorry, bookmaking, including the Gutenberg Prize and the AIGA Best Book. And she's worked and made uh, books with and for Chanel, the artist Oliver Eliasson, fashion designers Martin Magiella and Victor and Rolf, as well as closely collaborating with architect Ren Poolhouse on the recent books Element of, uh, Elements of Architecture and Countryside, a report, and two numerous many others to mention. Uh, I think Irma's books are architectural book labours of love, they're tour de force, they have strong and unwavering conceptual underpinnings. But there's also an intimate understanding of the craft of bookmaking in her books. She's uncompromising in a vision for the look, feel, and sometimes also smell of these books, understanding how the very form of the book can communicate and evoke as much sometimes as the content. I'd like to tell you a bit of a story. This is a very short story. So a few years ago, I used to run a book project with my first year students, which that particular year involved the students going to the Leeds Museum Resource Centre and they were asked to make a book out of what they found there. One of the students became a bit obsessed by photographing radioactive rocks uh, that and she photographed them from behind lead lined screens. Another photographed dead animals that had been caught at the customs uh, in the UK. And to inspire the students, I constantly showed the work of today's speaker, Irma Baum. We watched videos and talked about Irma's work. We poured over demonstrations of her books online. And the students probably thought I had a rather unhealthy obsession, I think, with Irma's back books, particularly <laughs> uh, the, um, the Sheila Hicks and the SVH book. And they may have been right, actually. Uh, and so I suppose I suppose this is a good place as any to start, which is hello, Irma, and welcome to Leeds remotely. <laughs> yes, um, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear hello. you. Okay. So just, First of all, it, it's so funny how you pronounce my name. My name is Boom, and oh. and uh, and everybody in uh, outside the Netherlands says Boom. It's Boom. It means it's me. You say it after, uh, in a German way, but it's Boom. And and if you say it in your language, it's Boom, which means explosion. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. a small correction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so, I mean, the first thing I'd like to ask you, I mean, it's probably a good place to start, is the um, is the SHV Think Book, perhaps. Um, should we start with that? Do you first want to see my to see my office? Oh, yeah. Should we have a look at? Yeah, should we see the context? Seeing as we're in Leeds, and yeah, you're in maybe, maybe it, I could like, do it in one minute. And yeah. uh, I'm sitting in front of uh, my books. These are all the books we've made, and um, and it's arranged by color which looks nice but is super unhandy so uh, if i have another chance i would organize it differently but it, it's a very nice uh, small space where i'm sitting now because of the acoustics but we have another space and that's here can you see uh, anna and freddy please say hello <laughs> they are sitting here here is where we are working and here you see books uh, from uh, in the, which I show in the current mini book. There's another guy sitting here. And wait, Julius wave as well. Peace. The, peace, he says. Spread the word. <laughs> peace, spread peace. the word. <laughs> My friend. Uh, we have a small kitchen where we work. And, and eat and have meetings. And so basically a nice uh drawers and, and lots of books 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 okay so that's the office so it is a tiny office uh, and it is also specific for uh, people who make books they, you cannot make a book in a huge office because making books costs so much time and in a big office or agency uh, it, then a book would cost a million to produce and if you're a small office then it is, of course, something completely different. But you were asking for this book, right? Let's start with the, yes, let's start with the big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in a way, it is not a big book, but it's a fat book. It has uh, 2,136 pages, and it's a book for, um, uh, for uh, the uh, a coal trade company. And um, this coal trade company is, is a multinational based in the Netherlands. And um, I worked for, for the owner of the company first privately. And, uh, and it went so well. And then he asked me to, uh, yeah, to work for him and, and make a book for a jubilee book for the, the, the anniversary of this uh, company. Because they were founded in 1800. 96 and so almost uh, more than 25 years ago they existed 100 years and uh, I collaborated on this project with uh, Jan Pineapple, an art historian and we decided to make a book uh, we, we said yes to make a book because we knew it would take us uh, five years to work on this project and um, and we also said we want to make a book which is um, and we decided to make a book because this is in 91 and in 91 then internet became uh, more democratic and popular and of course we we thought of making a book uh, not making a cd rom and but then we thought we we even went to new york to find out there was a company called voyager to um to check out if we could make a cd rom because this company is also uh, a company who was looking into the future and not into the past. So we thought, let's go for something uh, for new media. So, but we uh, knew that if we would work five years on this project, that after uh, the moment the CD-ROM would be released, it would be outdated. So we thought we can better uh, uh, use the most stable medium there is, namely making a book a printed book, but use the the elements of uh, of internet. So, like this is basically browsing through, uh, like it's browsing like through an uh, on an internet page. But then internet was not so popular. It was it was the, at the very beginning, um, and so we we made this book. Uh, uh, with no page numbers, and the no page numbers is also a reference to the to the uh, to the internet, where you also have no page numbers. 
and and it's in reverse chron chronological order because that's also how your mind works you know things from now but if you go back to uh, to the past it's filtered and that's also what you see if you go through this book the more you go to the back the more it is uh, uh, it becomes a more simple book basically and more the, the, the events are more filtered and were much easier to uh, to choose and um, and also when because this is a book for the future we said uh, we want to have paper which is uh, 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 totally environmentally friendly so it is a paper uh, it's cotton without pesticides uh, so it was really hard to find uh, good and, and uh, ecological uh, cotton paper um, so and there are things in to see if you keep it in specific light there's a watermark with the corporate philosophy of the company, which is keep things simple, listen, learn, react, and, and that kind of things. And it's in uh, English and in Chinese. So there's a complete uh, Chinese version. And if you think of a Chinese version now, you would uh, say yes, but in the beginning of, in 91, there was nobody thinking of uh, China. And um, but uh, we already, because we made it in reverse chrono chronological order, we thought it was interesting to, um, yeah, to make a Chinese version. We also wanted to make an, a Spanish version, but at some point we didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> we stopped. So th this was given to employees of the company, wasn't it? No, no. Oh, it wasn't. So it's, a, it's a privately owned uh, company, and it was it's a family-owned company. It went only to shareholders. Shareholders. And shareholders. Uh, so at that time there were about 400 uh, shareholders. Super. Uh, um, how do you say that? Uh, um, uh, a company who had never a loss. So there, there's a lot of profits. So shareholders have. Uh, if you are a shareholder, you can only become a shareholder if you're family. So it's really, it's so it's really for a small group of people. But then when we were working on the book and we were thinking of, uh, yeah, we had to, to, to think of the paper um, uh, and, and ecological paper. First, I wanted to work uh, with Japanese paper because Japanese, we found, or I found Japanese paper, uh, which was from, from leaves, from plants, really beautiful. And, uh, and it was okay to order. Of course, it's, it was a lot of, uh, money also to, to get all the paper to the Netherlands from Japan but the paper company was super happy with everything but they said um, 14 uh, oh yeah it, it's uh, we can uh, deliver it in 14 years instead of a uh, few years few years was would have been great because we were we were working anyway five years on the project but it was 14 years so then I had to find something else and in the end I found um, uh, this company in the Netherlands who could make uh, the paper for this uh, project. It's my own recipe, so there is much more uh, to tell. Basically, yeah, there are more. There, it's a little bit secretive how this <laughs> works. Yeah. And then if you uh, flip the book from one side to the other, you see a, a tulip field, and, and the other way around. <laughs> There's, a, uh, yeah, it's very hard to see, I guess. A poem is printed. So, and that's the only Dutch part, the edges. The rest is, uh, it's an English version and, um, the, and a Chinese version. The English version is uh, white and the, and the Chinese version is black. And this is the logo. So further, there's nothing on the book. And, and of course, these bookmarks. And the bookmarks, uh, you can, uh, there are eight. You can place them on specific places. And then you find uh, the title of the book, if you, because there's no title, basically. I, so we, I call it uh, the SHV book, but it's the SHV Think book. And Think in Dutch is Denk. And in Dutch, this book would be a Gedenk book. So to a Gedenk, a rethink book. And so we made it a book, uh, so we took off the G, and then you have Denk. Denk is think. Yeah, and that's, uh, and that's uh, uh, the name of the book. But a rethink would also would have been nice. SHV, a rethink book instead of think book. <laughs> 
So, so um, when it take when something like this takes five years, how devoted were you over that five years to making just this book? This alongside other projects at the time, were you devoting quite a lot of time to this? Uh, and how does that work in terms of uh, were you showing your commissioner like drafts all the way through, or was this very much he mm -hmm. left to? Yeah. Mm. We uh, had meetings because if you have a project for five years, you have five years, you have to make your own deadlines because if uh, five years seems like a lot of time. But uh, of course, in the end, we didn't have enough time, but we made um, um, uh, deadlines every three months. We would meet uh, the board of directors of the company and at some point uh, the CEO of the company said, OK, we only uh, let's meet only with me, Paul Ventner from Flissinger, half British, by the way. And he said, uh, because all the other directors will be gone uh, when it's 96, so let's meet the three of us and we would meet anywhere in the world where he was because we planned the dates and if he was in mentioned something in Scotland we would fly to Scotland if he was in in uh, uh, name yeah Poland we would meet in Poland so we would always meet on specific moments and uh, and discuss uh, our project and in the very beginning we 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 talk to him, uh, um, yeah, we explained the idea, but we never showed the book. We only showed the, uh, because there was so much trust and so much uh, freedom and, and yet he was so confident that we could do it. And we were doubting all the time. Can we do this? Can we make this book? Because Johan, with whom I collaborated, is an art historian for modern art and I'm a book designer and, um, and no background in any uh, research except for my own uh, projects, of course. But um, so we were totally uh, sort of new and, and, and alien in this whole world of Jubilee books. So, so basically the book doesn't also look like a Jubilee book. It's something else. But um, the 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 thing was when we showed in uh, I think uh, somewhere in '95 we showed the book to him and we were of course yeah we had material it's all archival material we didn't write anything we only wrote only the structure of study for this uh, project so I have to look for it it's always unhandy when there are no page numbers. <laughs> It's my own trap, um, but um, wait, 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 where is it? So, and I must say, I got to know uh, Paul Ventoner from Vlissingen because there was a symposium in the in the Stedelijk Museum, in the Contemporary Art Museum here, about the future of the world where the Dalai Lama participated, Robert Rauschenberg, John Cage, etc. But the only thing we wrote uh, in 91 for this book is uh, a structure of study and there uh, Jan and I, this is Jan and this is, and, and uh, Jan had hair there when we finished the project he had no hair anymore <laughs> and I can tell you I was 60 kilos when I started and about 80 when I uh, when the project stopped because of all the sitting we were only sitting 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 and I know all these uh, things precisely we Jan and I when we started the project we wrote in a booklet uh, our physical, uh, um, how we look physically, how long, long hair we had, uh, how thin, and we all have all the measurements of our body uh, starting the project and ending the project. And it was terrifying how we changed in those <laughs> five years. <laughs> but, um, but, but further in the book, uh, it's all about uh, uh, the archival material. And we had, we had a material for, um, five or six uh, thousand pages. So we had to cut down to uh, to 11 centimeters because in in the Netherlands, at least you can cut a book on this size. This is 11 centimeter. And uh, if you go bigger, it has to go in two times. But we wanted to have the book cut in once because we had this poem on the edges. So it was really important that we it would stay but, uh, uh, yeah, uh, no, no bigger than uh, or fatter than 11 centimeters. So that's also what decided uh, the volume. And uh, hence of the oldest um, 
shareholder could hold this book because we had many sizes, but she says this is a good size and a woman of 85. And then we said, OK, then we do this size of book. So it's a uh, very humane. Every text is signed. There's no anonymous text in this book. There's it's it's all uh, based on humans and, and, and on real material. So one of the questions that one of the students asked, which I think is quite a, an apt uh, time to ask this, they asked, how do you decide in what order the pages of the book should be designed and be designed page by page? I mean, there's 2000 pages there and you equated it with the idea of internet browsing that this would be, I mean, that's quite difficult in terms of giving it structure if you're trying to make it look like a kind of, and I was reminded quite a lot, I was talking to my students about Muriel Cooper's book, the Bauhaus book in 1969, where she was very much interested in that idea of, so she filmed it with a 16 millimeter camera. Have you seen the little film that was made? Of, uh, it's a really beautiful film where she's thinking about this book like a kind of uh, the internet browser before they existed. So it's very similar in some ways. So how do you structure that? Yeah, so the structure basically is the is uh, the reverse chronological order, and 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 this uh, structure of study uh, which Johan and I wrote, uh, that was the way how we uh, looked for the archival material because you need to have certain glasses on to know uh, what you're looking for. Uh, otherwise, if we didn't make this uh, this structure of study, we could never have done it. Because Johan was maybe going to an archive uh, to the left and I was going to the right. So, um, so we, so when we ordered all the material, I think that's what we did first. Uh, make a, we had all these binders and we had an enormous archive. We, we basically made the archive for the company because they didn't have a, an archive. We made it and we went to, to family, to shareholders. We made, pedigrees, we made everything. We were crazy. We, we even did all the, we checked all the financial uh, numbers of, of the company, which are in, um, maybe you can see it a bit, it, which is in uh, laser cutting. At that time, laser cutting was very special. We had to go to, to Croydon, to, to London, to Germany and to France to get 24 pages laser cut it now would be easy, of course, but then it was really a thing. But the, the, the financial statements of the company are laser cut, they are in air. And we really want, we did it in air because it's an, uh, this company is more about the philosophy and it's more about the idea than about the money. But we thought it was interesting to compare uh, their net income and how much dividend they paid and how much tax they paid. We compared it to uh, the temperatures of the last hundred years because that's of course important. Um, if it was a, a, a hot or warm winter, then of course um, profits would not be so high. And if it was, a, we, we made these, uh, these, these uh, uh, infographics. And there you also see if there is a, a war in South Africa or in Africa somewhere, then uh, the, the, the coal supply from Germany, which basically SHV had coal supply from Germany, would go extensively high. So, it, so the graph, the, in, the information, the infographics tell a lot about uh, how SHV was uh, uh, manipulating in the world. It was really interesting. So, so it was. I didn't do a PhD, but it could have been a PhD project because it. And and talking about the design, I think that was also a question. Uh, I don't think that this book is really. Uh, the design is very uh, uh, interesting. It is the book is an idea. We have these. We made. It's more a film. Yeah, there's a, a sequence of uh, of images which also could work as a, a as a cinema, and uh, and we have these questions. We have uh, about 70 questions in the book, and every question is a is a case study. So um, if we say did it happen all suddenly, then it or or why if uh, Lenin uh, is it that? What if Lenin uh, had not lived? Then there is a specific uh, case study. So the, the, there are no headings, there's no articulation of text. There are only questions. And the questions uh, help you to go through the book and help you to, to get 
you get a hold of the content because otherwise it's lost. But basically the, the, the typography is always in the Scala at that moment that was Dutch typeface. I really liked uh, I, I use, but so again, no articulation. Uh, and there were, um, um, annual reports we used and the annual reports we used in uh, I have to find one in black because it's basically uh, the, the the heating coal so it's it's black and silver and those were elements we uh, which were uh, uh, returning things uh, so questions annual reports uh, yeah, and then we, we had to choose, of course, what do we want to show? What do, do we want to tell about this company? And we found also out in, in, in uh, talking to many people in the in the in this organization. I think there were at that time 40 or 50,000 people. But we we talked uh, and we worked in the office of SHV. We didn't do it in uh, in our offices, but we worked in Utrecht where the company was based. And uh, so also to, to feel this sort of mentality of this company. And um, so uh, we, we realized that things were, co uh, uh, success was, uh, could have been, it could be a coincidence that to start macro, these big stores was basically, it is mentioned here, but it's, it's a sort of, was a minor thing they tried, but it became super big. Uh, wait, I have to turn the battery laptop yeah and um so um it's all about doubt and 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 not knowing and and i think that that is the the beauty of the book it's not we are like this and we are perfect no it's it's not at all it's all about we don't know let's search let us people let's do this or that so it is it is uh, and uh, basically an anti jubilee book it's something completely different and that's why it's so timeless. It's already 25, more than 25 years old. But if you look at it, it is. It looks as if it's made uh, now, which is amazing. So um, you obviously had an incredibly progressive and accommodating commissioner for this piece of work who was willing to kind of uh, go that extra length for your vision of. And yeah. I there's two kind of questions. One of them is, when does the conceptual underpinning of the book come? Is that quite early on? So you're able to convince your commissioner? Uh, no, we, yeah, it's a, an interesting question because I worked for him privately. So there was already this trust and this confidence. And uh, right at the beginning, we had this idea because to make this book and to do all the research and travel around the world, to to had to find everything, do all these interviews. There was a lot of information we had to to inform ourselves. We didn't even know what the letters SHV meant, the <laughs> Steenkolen Handelsvereniging, Cold Trade Company. We didn't even know. So we and and Van Vlissingen, our commissioner, didn't tell. So and we didn't ask. So we were we were doing it our uh, ourselves. And I think that is. Uh, so nice about uh, a commissioner like him that there was all this trust. We never had to show a design because he knew I was a designer. And and and, and he knew, uh, knew that we, Jan and I, were both doing the research and the editing and everything. So there was simply complete trust. And, and a lot of people tell me, oh, yeah, that guy has so much money, so it's easy. No. There are so many people with a lot of money, but there are so less people with trust who give you all the trust and, and, and five years time to work on it. Because that, that's one of the crucial elements. Uh, it's not a year before, he asked us five years before the Jubilee. And, and I think that is one of the, he was a very philosophical man because he was, when he was 40, he was ill. And so after, and he survived his cancer, he, he, he got cured and uh, and it turned into a, uh, him into not this business businessman, but he became a completely different man. That's also why he could support this uh, project in the state, like this art, meet science and spirituality in a changing economy project. Yeah, and, and that's how I got to know him because I made that book for this for this symposium. So it's all a coincidence. It's and it's also um, 
uh, that Art Meets Science project, which is not such an interesting book. This is the book I've made. It's really not interesting. It has a work of uh, uh, the book itself. The content is interesting, but the design is not. So it's there's an art piece by Robert Rauschenberg on the cover, and Robert said, "I like the book, but the cover is lousy. Also with the bad typography, it's really bad." <laughs> but then, um, and but it's it's basically a reader about uh, with, with all these people in it, like the Dalai Lama and, and John Cage and and. Uh, Marina Abramovic, but it's basically a sort of textbook. But he liked it very much. And what he liked was uh, I made um, from art pieces or from people, I showed uh, color, uh, the images in color Xerox. And that was at that time sort of new to and, and, and also to use it as an image in a book. So it's not the most brilliant image, but it's a Xerox. And uh, he totally uh, loved it. So and, and he and that's how I got to know him. Yeah. And uh, and finally, do you think he's a very individual? Uh, that's that's he or do you think that uh, there's an understanding in the Netherlands about the benefit that graphic design can bring? Is there a sense that business? Yeah. Language? Kind of, of understand course, yeah. a of more design. Yeah, of course, we have a, a long history. If you go to the Rijksmuseum, uh, you see uh, uh, Rembrandt did a lot of commissioned work. That it, it's all uh, basically all commissioned, and I think it, it is in the genes of uh, of the Dutch. And uh, yeah, they always have, have commissioned artists or. Uh, uh, yeah, designers, of course, much later because it's a sort of new uh, profession. And uh, yeah, and we, of course, we had this wonderful uh, uh, PTT, the Postal Service, who already since 1920s gave commissions to architects, artists, and and designers to to make stamps. Emma, and do you have your stamp books there? I have the stamp books here. So. <laughs> It's good. So we, we talked a long time about SHV, but it is for me, even my my uh, my new book will be uh, there. The SHV is, uh, uh, yeah, it's a pivotal moment in my uh, career because it, it made me, I was already uh, doing editing, of course, uh, because the stamp books I made in 88, there are actually two. Um, Two years, two year books, and um, I did already hear the image editing, and also uh, came up with the idea for the text. It's 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 a book with inspiration sources, and um, here you can see. So I I did the research for all the images at that time when I was working at the government printing office, the most dullest place ever, <laughs> but that's why it was so good, I think. Um, uh, so when I got this commission, I got it, and it's really in, uh, interesting for students to hear. So it, I worked at this big place, government printing office in The Hague. And uh, and when I went to art school, I studied painting and only uh, the last year's um, graphic design. So my skills were not, uh, wow, <laughs> were not that great. Uh, so. Um, when I uh, got the job at the government printing office, I thought I do only the unimportant projects. So the projects, none of my colleagues, there were about 30 colleagues, the who uh, the projects my colleagues didn't want to have. So every day they would go around, who wants to do this book or this thing? And and always what was where the leftovers were advertisements, advertisements. And I did always for the publishing house, the, the ads, but because I had not so much skills, so I was just doing something. I was experimenting. And I also did uh, uh, ads for uh, the STEM books, I think from Carol Martens and Hartwerken. And so, and they were crazy. And, um, and the Oxenaar, the then uh, head of uh, art and design of the PTT, he, uh, who also commissioned the stamp books, said, I want that person who's making the ads for the stamp books, this person should make the next stamp books. 
So I was completely young because always people who get this commission were at least 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or old older and people. Male. And male. And, and male. I was the first female, right? Yeah. First female and the and the youngest ever. And um, and but I thought it was really super difficult. So uh, but I I thought why I'm not and that's also an advice for students. You always should do what you always do, not suddenly change the, the idea. So I did what I always was doing. I really was always interested how people got inspired by uh, something. Like here, Andy Warhol was inspired by the Last Supper of uh, Da Vinci. And also uh, Holbein, the uh, whole line, I must say. Whole line, the Arctic. So, but you see, the outcome is different, and uh, that that's why that's what I thought was really interesting. And me myself, I was totally inspired by Malevich, by the black uh, square. And so I also thought I should make the typography in black squares, in squares. So there's no hyphenation or punctuation. And also, I had to make these books in uh, three months, and it's before computer. Like Massimo Vignelli says, said, you have AC and BC. AC is after computer, and you have BC before computer. This is definitely before computer, so it's worth cutting and pasting. I had to travel to all the archives to get material. Um, so I made a, a grid, which is basically a diagonal. Everything is placed in the in the center. So these blocks. And the blocks are is a, is a sort of paragraph, and that decides uh, the the size of the 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 square. The captions are uh, in the text from the center, going to the outside, and so the page numbers are on the inside. You cannot see them, but then I didn't even think about it. I thought that I have Japanese folding, so I want to use the inside of the. Uh, of the book, so I placed the the, the Roman numbers. I don't know if you can see it, but I placed the Roman numbers on the inside. But of course, you cannot see anything here. But uh, at that time, I didn't bother. Images go over the edge, and also here I use these oh, already. Yeah, I used uh, Xeroxes, but here I also I must say full color Xerox. Uh, I also like the imperfection. I think the more perfect something is, the more, yeah, then there is no imagination. So I'm, I'm really, I really like the, the degeneration of the image. So the, this photo copy or whatever. So it's all about what the image means. So here you have the espresso machine and then this art piece. But anyway, that, that is how I uh, worked on it. And also the consequences, so if a caption is longer, then it runs over the image. I didn't care. Sometimes it runs over the over the edge. And um, yeah, I got. Uh, I I simply did it. And of course, I went extremely over budget. And um, but also, I was and still am not interested in uh, in money. I was just doing it. And 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 of course, at some point, they said, hey. Instead of uh, 96 pages, we have now about 500 pages. How is this going? And all this lithography, we have to 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 make these repros of all these images. And uh, and what is that on the inside? They, uh, at some point, they said, "Well, okay, you have to stop. We make it single page, no Japanese folding, because Japanese binding was never." Uh, done uh, on, on the, for 8,000 copies, only for artist books, but not for on such a large uh, scale. And um, but I just continued, and I just kept working, <laughs> very stubborn and and not listening too much what other people were saying. And yeah, then it happens. Yeah. And Emma, is that more difficult? You were obviously younger and didn't have the prestige or the name. How did yeah. you run by some of these quite unconventional design decisions with maybe, as you said, 60 year olds in the who were maybe less interested in? How did you get that by? Yeah, so I think these books prove that I was always like this and I continue doing that. And I think because I was from the very beginning 
uh, doing this. And of course, I always have an argument. I always can tell why. If it's just, oh, I don't know and I don't care. No, but I know why I want to do things. I also wanted to prove with these books and with the double pages and the, and the, the way it's made, that we have this enormous history in uh, making stems, but it's not always good. It is, uh, and sometimes the work of uh, of the designers, I thought uh, the stems were okay, but if you look at the other work of the of the uh, of the designers, was sometimes much better. So I also included uh, other work of design of the designers, which basically was not uh, the case. It was not necessary to show, but I thought, yeah, if you get such a prestigious commission as, uh, as a stamp making, then you get uh, your, um, uh, you get paralyzed because it's so important and then you don't know what to do anymore. But I want to, to make it more relative, which I think is also very Dutch to, to think in that way that uh, uh, stay calm and, uh, and, and just do what you always do. And this yeah, so I, from the very beginning, I had this behavior and I'm uh, even 30 years later, I'm still doing the same. Do you think the I mean, it's interesting you talk about editing a lot of your books and and being in control of the research and things like this. And is that does that come from this point where you realize that stubbornness, that vision? I want it to be like this. Uh, I'm going to do all of it, even if it takes me. Do, do, yeah. Did you have that before this, or was that yeah. a kind of creation of doing this book, these two books? Yeah, but maybe it's also uh, uh, my character. I have something in my head, and it has to be executed. It has to be done. Because if you have a good idea and it's not made, it doesn't exist. Uh -huh. So I really want to have it made. I'm I have very, a question. Uh, um, um, focused on, on that it's it happens, that it's materialized. It has okay. to happen. There's a question here from one of my students, which kind of follows on to that, sorry, is do you ever discount really valuable ideas because they're simply not possible or is there always a way? There's always a way, always. <laughs> And yeah. especially if somebody else, all these, uh, of course, we have these wonderful printers and binders and people, they always say, oh, no, it's not possible. Like the stamp books was not possible. But then I, uh, the, the models are now in the show, but I made for these books, of course, tiny models and, and big models. And uh, I said, it is possible. And, um, and then you have to find people who say, well, Let's try. And and in a way, everybody's happy because you also help to develop the, the graphic industry. So yeah. they, in the end, they're always happy and always proud. And now, of course, everybody says, oh, can we do, can we make uh, prints and buy books for you and this and that. So uh, always what you have in your mind, you should, uh, yeah, it has to be done. <laughs> if I can make it by hand, the machine can do it much better, much better. That's my uh, philosophy, yeah. So this was quite controversial, wasn't it? Uh, your... Don't be. <laughs> because Don't one be. of the judges. Oh, was... be, it got, it's my first best designed book, but if you read the jury report, they hate it. <laughs> it, it it's a brilliant failure. <laughs> the jury report is written by my uh, a colleague from the government printing office. He was in the jury. He was totally against these books, totally. And uh, and I also got so much hate mail. Um, and now now it would be email, but then it was in in letters that people and especially uh, the stamp collectors didn't like it. Uh, people who collect stamps are basically a little bit old-fashioned people, conventional people. <laughs> to generalize, um, but uh, they they didn't understand because they thought the printing was not good enough, and then the the, the Japanese uh, folding they thought they got uh, an uncut book because they said there's something to see on the inside. So why is the book not cut? So uh, books were returned, and uh, yeah, it was it was. And I and I must honestly say I got so many of these terrible letters because if something is nice, nobody nobody let you know. Only when it's wrong. And um, I thought I could not walk on the street anymore. 
so many people who disliked it. And then, uh, and that's also a relativation, then, uh, you know, football players are famous, but graphic designers not. <laughs> they don't play a role at all. You can just go on the street. Nobody know, knows that I made that book. <laughs> In the world of social media, they may have, you may not no, have been able to walk no. the street. Up. Yeah. And now I would have been lynched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes, yeah. So could you tell us, I mean, the, the, I suppose the other next one to talk about is the Sheila Hicks book because of the difficulties in terms of getting that printed and, and also meeting a, maybe a commissioner who was kind of more problematic uh, than maybe some of your other. So do you want to talk us a bit through yeah. the Sheila Hicks book? Yes. So the Sheila Hicks book, I don't know if anybody of you uh, know it. it. It's a book uh, uh, for the American artist who lives in um, in Paris. And, um, and it's nice that you asked the Sheila Hicks book after the stamp books, because of the stamp book, she, she invited me. Right. So there is this photographer who also lives in uh, Paris, Joseph Kudelka who photographed uh, the invasion. That's he right. found the stamp books at La Lune bookstore uh, in Paris, and he showed the books to uh, Sheila. He didn't even know it, that it was Dutch or anything, but he showed it to Sheila. He said, I don't know who made these books, but I found your designer. So it was Joseph Kudelka who, um, who introduced me to, uh, to Sheila Hicks. And, uh, and at some point, uh, Sheila Hicks called me and and I had no clue who, it was a little bit, yeah, there was, of course, it was already email. It's beginning of 2000, yes, it was email. And, uh, and she called me if I wanted to make a book for her. And I said, well, I don't know you, but where do you live? She said, in Paris. So, well, I come and visit you. That's, uh, I always reply when people call. Uh, if people send me an email to make a book, I, I ignore. Because if people don't have the decency to uh, to call, then let's, let's go. Then I let it go. But anyway, so I um, I went to Paris and then I found out that she was a Yale undergraduate and graduate student in the 50s, where at that moment were only almost male uh, uh, students and, and professors. And so that was immediately a click because I, this is my 30th year I teach at Yale. And uh, so that's really a long time. So right after the stamp books, I became a teacher there in the US. And, um, and then we started the conversation. Basically, we started the conversation. And first of all, I wanted to make a retrospective uh, for her. But then we found out, oh, then, then we need some more people. and it, Anyway, I said, let's start first with the miniatures, with your small pieces. And that's basically what this book is about. And I made a model. I made maybe 50 models for, for this project, 100% uh, and the tiny models. Really a lot, a lot, a lot. Because we're, we, we don't, we, if there is no deadline, there is no book. So there was no deadline. But then somebody from uh, New York, from Bart Graduate Center, um, came to see uh, Sheila and she saw my uh, my book proposal on the um, uh, on her table on her desk and she said what what is this for a book and and, uh, and then Sheila said well it's a book uh, I'm working on and the woman said I want to produce this book you get a show in New York so it started with the book and, and it's really interesting. And, um, and in the first meeting, Sheila Hicks gave me to read on the train the text from Artur Danto, um, weaving as metaphor and model for political thought. And for me, it was crucial to read this text because I have no, uh, not a specific interest in textile art or so, or fiber art, how do you call that? But uh, after reading the text of Danto, uh, it became more clear to me and I also, now uh, I started to understand how crucial it is to uh, the whole idea of textile. And that's why I place the text of Danto very big. And if you turn the pages, it becomes uh, smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and smaller and smaller and smaller. 
until you have the, the final size of the book. And um, the, the publisher, your press, uh, didn't like that idea at all because they said, well, you can, this is an academic book in the end. They said, uh, you cannot play with uh, the text of Artur Danto. He's very famous and a very important art critic and uh, you have to typeset it normal. And then I said, well, is the man still alive? And uh, and then he was. I said, shall we ask Danto instead of having assumptions what somebody else thinks? And that's also in our profession. Always somebody has an assumption about something. Never, never listen to assumptions. Always ask directly. So Danto saw uh, uh, the uh, the typesetting and he loved it. it. He said it's the first time uh, my text is uh, typeset uh, as an invitation and that people start to read it. So there was that happened. So great. And the other thing, of course, is that the book has these uh, rough edges. You can see it, I guess. It's very uh, rough and the rough edges are an image rhyme with the rough edges of the work of Sheila. <coughs> Sorry, Sheila told me that the selfage of her work is uh, there you can see how how good a weaver is and for me of course already also for ages the edge of the book is important so that's why there's this rough edge and further i wanted to have a white cover because i thought if you put a work of sheila hicks on the cover then only because at that time she now she is a known artist but at that time she wasn't at all Imagine if you put a work like this on the cover, only people interested in textile would pick up the book. And now uh, she got a much larger, larger audience because people would pick up this book because they wanted to see what it is. Of course, I had her name big on the spine and the spine is more important for a book than the cover. Only the publisher didn't know. But um, so it took me a really um, uh, a lot of energy to get this book uh, made as it is, as I can show it to you here, because the publisher said, we go bankrupt, we fire you, and it was all terrible. And, and but then at some point time was working uh, pro me, because at some point there was a show in New York, where, and this was the book for the, for the show. And, and at some point they said, well, do it, we get, then we go bankrupt and it's your fault. <laughs> but then uh, the good thing is the book was sold out immediately and now we have done the sixth print print no, print run uh, the sixth edition so it's a huge uh, success not only for Sheila but also for Bart Graduate Center it was a success and uh, and in the end for me it, because the MoMA decided to collect my work because of this book another uh, thing for students to to uh, realize you need stamina and you need a certain amount of stubbornness. One, one of my students has just asked how easy within the graphic in design industry is it to be a stubborn woman <laughs> in inverted commas? Well, yeah, no, I, th that is really interesting because stubborn woman and uh, and also if you make books, it's always uh, yeah, you, how do you call it? Spinner wheels, somebody use working like this uh, terrible um, yeah uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit uh, how do you say this I'm very blatant I'm very direct and uh, but I always can tell why I do things because uh, I consider myself uh, not as a very good designer uh, I'm, I'm not good in layouting but I have an idea and that idea I can execute and that's so I can always talk about my work instead of because if you talk about uh, I don't like yellow or uh, about uh, uh, the aesthetics, it's a dead end street. But if you talk about what it is and what it means and that this book is a tool for Sheila Higgs, then it's, you talk about something completely different and much more interesting. And um, and and then people can understand it and can say, OK, maybe you're not quite right, but it's an interesting point. Let's go ahead. And that's how I get things done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have some other questions here, um, which may relate again. Um, this is. Um, oh. 
this one's about um the ambition for your book project seem limitless but what are the realities of working with challenging production ideas i suppose that, that's kind of related and you've kind of talked about some of those yeah ideas. yeah but i think that's basically uh what i do the whole day the whole day on the phone the whole day calling and going always go eh, where it's made because i always say no and uh, and they always can do more than they think. So it's the, the during the night. I and and in the weekends I uh, try to do get some work done. And uh, during the day I'm on the phone. I'm calling yeah. and discussing and and going to see a binder and going to convince people. And uh, so that's it's a, almost a daily job. That's why I work 24/7. Otherwise I would get nothing done. I cannot, and I also cannot work on one project. So I work always on many projects, and uh, because everything takes so much time, it's not like architecture, where it can take ten years, but yeah, sometimes four years, five years, sometimes three months. But still, it is not about a crazy idea. It's always about the idea for that specific book. So it's not about doing always something weird or it's always very specific to the subject and, and uh, to to the materialization of that book. And then when it fits, when all the things come together, then it is nice. And of course, that happened in the Sheila Hicks book. Everything came together. No compromise, nothing. Yeah. And that's rare. I must say it's rare. There's always something you think. That's why I think uh, that's why I, uh, why I see my commissioners as, as victims. Because if I don't get it done with this book, then for a next book it has to happen. It has to happen. Yeah. Does that conceptual underpinning then allow you to do much longer projects because you still can go back to that original? This is the idea and we can all we all agree on this idea and we can kind of because it, it's difficult with such long projects to pick them back up again and know Right, where but was always, I with that project? But always the first ideas are the best ideas. Basically, uh, I, I, I stick to, to the first idea. Yeah. yeah. And of course, I make all these models and see. And also listen very carefully because it's really interesting that other people have very good ideas and the best idea should be executed. That That's also the thing. But I'm in, in, in the whole idea of bookmaking. I'm super fast. So <laughs> I'm always, I, I'm, it's always, um, uh, my brain is working. So uh, if there is something, if I talk to a new uh, commissioner and we talk about a project in person, that's the best, then I immediately know what to do. I always know, I won't tell, but I know immediately what to do. Could yeah. you explain a little bit about how you physically make your mock-ups and dummies and like kind of talk a little bit about the scale from going mini to big and then from big to small and yeah for example uh this book for uh louisiana for uh mika rottenberg um yeah so this is a book basically it's not a very complicated book uh but i i wanted to so mika i went to see her show in uh, copenhagen uh, or in denmark and um so it's a big book and uh, when I saw a show, she has all these hidden things. There's always uh, a video where uh, there is a hole or there is a uh, behind uh, a box something happening. And then I thought, well, that, that's basically what I also want to do in the book. So this looks like a normal book, but in a way you can always everywhere peek in to the book. So you can always look what, what uh, to other details of the of the work, and and that's what I uh, was working on. A book like this you cannot make in a computer. You have to make it handmade because otherwise you don't know what is inside and outside. That that, that is something you have to make uh, on the spot, and um, and also to to show that I really wanted to make a big book for for Mika. I. I had, of course, to make it 100% uh, percent, and also to show how uh, the image sequencing uh, works so that I have images which are more secretive are on the inside and other images are on the outside. So the the sequence and, and how the how it's placed is super important. Um, and then I, if I have made a, a, this big model, 
So in, in my show in, Amster, in the exhibition in Amsterdam, I show all these models. And there, there, I've made hundreds of these uh, books, and basically sometimes they are nicer than the real book because you can feel the, yeah, you're very close to 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 the work. So it's really completely made, exactly with the Victor and Rolf book. I did. Uh, it's all made. There's a film about me, a documentary, and there you see how uh, how I make the Victor and Rolf book. It's really cutting and pasting. But um, that and so I made make different size models because sometimes the big size is you have to make to to see how it works, but the smaller uh, models is much more easy to oversee. It's basically like how an architect works, so that you can see how uh, how text and image are uh, uh, working together, and that's why I make these uh, also these small models. So I spend a lot of time on making. Uh, making this, uh, yeah, these, these uh, things. But there's also a pleasure to make. Huh? It's not that I think, oh, I have to make another model. No, it is really also what I like very much. It's very uh, uh, rewarding to uh, to make your, your own book. That's basically what, what you're doing. It's, you don't have to wait before it gets printed, but you, uh, and, and I, of course, don't glue it always precisely, but sometimes with a, a uh, rubber band or uh, and, and then the cover is not precisely uh, it should be like this so a printed film to have to so that you can see the material it's also for myself nice but to see if the weird typography <laughs> works i have to i have to make it yeah you get attached to these mock-ups and models because i know that you talk quite a lot about not liking one-off artist books you look these are uh, for industrial production, aren't they? They're for reproduction. But this is very important to make because otherwise people don't have a clue what I'm doing. They yeah. don't have a clue. So I make films and that's also what you can see in the exhibition. I make films of these uh, books so to communicate how it works. Because then then also a printer and a binder in this uh, case, it's in, in Denmark. I have to show what I mean. So I, I send them uh, a film of the mock-up and explain what what it should be. Otherwise, they get an InDesign and they have no clue. So it, it is very helpful. Uh, it's for me really uh, uh, the process. And then I discover things. The whole idea I have made this flip book. Uh, where is it? Let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, where is it? Oh. Yeah, it's here. This whole idea of uh, of uh, doing this flipping from one side. Ooh, can you see it? Yeah. Here, a company is called Inside Outside, and if you flip one way, you see all the outside projects, only the the gardens. And if you do this, you see all the inside projects. This all this the die cuts, holes, yeah. <coughs> and holes. But this you can only discover when you when you make it. Yeah. It's really a discovery uh, I did by making uh, models. Oh, I, yeah, you, you don't. So I discover things uh, um, making these. Uh, yeah. Can we have a look at the uh, look at the Victor and Rolf book? Mm -hmm. Of course, that's uh, talking about a model. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, saying how difficult this is to show. Sorry, I'm giving you a bit it's of challenge. It's so here. heavy. That's, I, I, if I, uh, before uh, COVID, traveling around with books and, and giving lectures, I never brought this book because simply it takes too much space in my suitcase. Because I always bring 21 books and this would take place for four or five books also because it's so heavy. Victor and Rolf, uh, uh, when I, my first teaching experience is in Arnhem at the art school at the fashion department because fashion designers have to make books and um, or sort of mood books or something. And when I was uh, 28, I uh, did my first uh, teaching and Victor and Rolf were one of my uh, students. And so 30 years later or so, they asked me to make their book. And, uh, and I thought, well, what can I do? Um, because 
just a fashion show, a, a book uh, about fashion shows or something was a bit boring. And I thought I want what what fashion basically is is uh, it covers you. Hey, you you you. you Put a cardigan on or a coat. So I, I uh, thought the book should be called Cover Cover, and uh, because that's also uh, they also uh, uh, replicate words like bonbon is one of their uh, perfumes. So I thought only if you would call a book Cover, it's a bit weird. But Cover Cover is uh, then there's something going on. And so I basically uh, when I showed it to them, the book, again the book is in the exhibition, the, my first model was a blank uh, model where I um, uh, showed uh, the idea of the cover. Because basically this is a book with, uh, can you see it? Yeah. With dust jackets. Yeah. And uh, so, and in the middle of the book, because it's, it is, it should function as a book. Uh, you can see it, it looks like a, like a book. Um, it, in the middle, it is a uh, uh, board. It's very thick paper, and the more you go to the to the outside, the paper becomes uh, thinner, because otherwise you could not make uh, uh, you could not have this this fold here. So uh, so inside thick and outside uh, thin, and I started in the in the heart of the book with uh, with their with Victor and Rolf with their invitation of their first uh, show. And I also, okay, this is better. And then uh, if you, um, uh, and then I thought I should use the paper very efficiently. So if you have a paper sheet of 17 by 100, I cut the, the paper in half. So you have 35 or something by 100. And that's the size of the book. And then uh, there are 65 of these fold outs because they had so many uh, fashion shows. And everything is uh, uh, inverted, except the drawings they made. The drawings I kept uh, original, but further the whole book is uh, inverted. And every uh, page, every uh, sheet is uh, a fashion show. But because it's bound in the middle, it all mixes up. So there, there's not definitely a correlation between this and this. It's always indicated that this is a the Russian doll show, and this is uh, L'hiver de l'amour in 94, and this is 2000. But I also thought that was interesting that you can make you have a book with endless connections and and combinations. And there you also see the work of uh, Victor and Rolf. There are also empty pages in the book because Victor and Rolf were on strike. So, and that's why uh, the pages are uh, empty. So there's a whole empty sheet. Um, so, and that's how the book works. So I, I chose, uh, I was maybe, maybe two years working on uh, the images and to find all the images, the image editing and the image collecting. And, uh, but it was so much fun. And uh, it, it is something you can continue and you can never stop. But at some point there has to be a book, of course, uh, pr published. And uh, at some point uh, I stopped and uh, that is this book, which you can look at maybe endless uh, combinations. And, uh, and it really gives uh, a very good idea of Victor and Rolf's um, uh, work. It's, it's their sketches, it's their they're uh, they're always together. That's also what I wanted to show on the cover. They're always together. If you see Rolf, you see Victor. So um, and uh, and it's stitched. It has a beautiful stitch here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Uh, well, and it, it uh, changes the idea of the book, doesn't it? And the architecture of the book, I suppose, and thinking about kind of uh, it as a sculptural and architectural piece yeah. that you. Yeah. So I, I know you've thought a lot about kind of the architecture of the book. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is the architecture of the book, and and also, uh, yeah, to 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 make the book happen, you you really have to choose the right uh, material and paper because otherwise, if it's all thick. It's not a book, then it, it, it's a plank, it's wood. But if it's thin, it's like whipped cream. So you, you have to find a uh, sort of way how how to make uh, the book work. And and basically because it's uh, uh, it's only cover, 
uh, there is no content. The content is the dust jacket. So every dust jacket is, is, is literally the cover, what you, you, you put on. And, and that's also what I uh, think is interesting, that things are intrinsic already. The, the things are in the work. And I think that that is also what uh, what keeps me going. Every book is different I make because I, I work from the from the content, from the idea. So one of the, a, a few of the students have asked, uh, what paper do you use in your books? Uh, and yeah, what's your inspiration for the materials and paper you use in your book? I mean, I know you talked a little bit with the SHV um, about kind of paper and you talked a little bit there about the differences of kind of paper weight in, in the it's in Rolf book. Um. But for SHV maybe I, I didn't tell because the book is made for the at least for the coming 500 years the paper had to be very good quality so that's why it had to be clean no pesticides no additional stuff in it so that it would stay the same and uh, 25 years later at least it is still it didn't turn yellow or anything it's really good quality because nowadays paper and that's also because I do this study in the Vatican Library and there you see that books uh, uh, had a much better uh, quality because those books look look new basically because of the good quality paper yeah Maybe that brings us to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a little segue from architecture into Renhul House and yeah. No, Vatican, Vatican. Yeah. Oh, the Vatican. I was going to ask you, how did that come about? I mean, that must have been really fascinating, spending time in the Vatican. Um, yeah, so uh, I was invited by the American Academy um, to have a residence for, uh, art, to become an artist in residence for a few months. And they asked me maybe in 2014 or so, and it was happening in 2018. So I said, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and at some point I went to, to Rome and, um, and I got a big studio and, and all these people who are invited because they're pre de Rome winners. They all have to do a sort of project, but if you're invited, and I'm not American, I'm Dutch. So I was invited as guest and then you can do what you want. And then I thought, well, if I'm in Rome, what is the best in Rome? Visiting libraries, because there are many, many good ones. And I went to many good ones, like uh, there's Angelica, Casanatense, it's really all beautiful and, and great libraries. But then I met this old lady, Peggy Brown, 88 year old uh, lady. And if you're, if you're at the American Academy, the idea is that you eat, have lunch and dinner together. And at some point I was sitting next to this Peggy Brown. And she said, uh, hey, what are you doing here? You're not from the States. And I said, well, I'm, I'm invited here and I'm a book designer. And uh, OK, what kind of books do you make? So, well, I made in my studio an exhibition. And she said, I want to see it because I'm a mediavist. And I'm studying the, the Middle Ages and uh, books in the Vatican. It would be lovely to see your work. And when she saw my work, she said, well, there's only one place you should study, and that's in the Vatican. Forget all the other libraries, go to the Vatican Library. You have to write a proper letter because you're not a scholar and uh, have it translated into Italian. And I guess you will be in, uh, 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 admitted. And that happened. Yeah, and I got totally addicted to it. But in the same time, I was working on the countryside project with Rem Kohas. And uh, when I found uh, the, the oldest book in the Vatican is from 750 or so after uh, uh, Christ, really old book. It is uh, the Virgilius, the Virgil, and that's the book on the countryside. It's a laudatio on the countryside. But I was also looking for the first printed pocket book and the first printed pocket book is by Aldous Manusius and it has the same content as the Aldous book. So also the Virgil, also the Laude, uh, Laudatio on the countryside. So I thought I uh, when I realized I had this Aldous pocket book of the world, printed pocket book because there are many other uh, like uh, manuscripts and whatever. Um, so I said to Rem, 
I have the size for our book. It's uh, a tiny size. It's the size of the oldest of the first printed pocketbook, and we have to do it because it is from 1501 by Aldous Manusius. It had the content is the countryside. We were working on the exhibition, and I was also doing the catalog. I was the art director of the exhibition, but uh, the, also the designer of the catalog. And uh, I showed it to him, and he said, "Let's do it." Yeah. And it is really nice. At the Guggenheim, they really had to get used to it because they they have these big books, and suddenly I came with this tiny book, and uh, but it became really a bestseller because you have countryside in your pocket, which is really nice. And uh, it's t published by Taschen, and Taschen means also pocket, so it is really uh, it's a very nice coincidence. Yeah. Did you feel like the universe had come together to speak to you at that, that point with the size and everything in the Vatican and yeah? It had to, it, it was meant to be, I guess. It's it was no go. And I, I believe in the things, in Dutch you would say to fall, uh, it, uh, things fall to each other and coincidence. Uh, yes, I, I totally, and, and if that happens, you should uh, recognize it and use it. Yeah, so I thought. Let's do it, and I and it's exactly the same dimensions as the book in the in the Vatican, exactly the same. So, uh, so when I prepared uh, uh, the 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 design, the typography, uh, it was I all prepared with uh, placeholder text, uh, the whole structure and all the images. It was all very fixed setup and people could write according to the uh, amount of words. And so. that, that was for Tashin and you've also worked for Faden and things recently. I was just wondering, yeah. are they quite different as kind yeah. of more conventional publishers and how do you talk to them about? I, I see them as very conventional publishers actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and of course they're commercial publishers, but uh, Rem has a very good relation to, uh, to Tashin. And um, that's also why I think this could happen because uh, that, that it, it's it's so a non tashian book. All the Tashian books are these muscle books, and this yeah. is anti-muscle book. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's the anti-Bruce really Metal. <laughs> but it's such a good idea. And everybody says, oh, it's such a good idea. So then people, so again, if you have a good idea, people uh, take it, yeah. I've got a few more questions. Um, I mean, one of my students said, uh, watching you hold the books and showing the pages, we reminded that books have a relationship. Your books are experiences, tactile, physical. And they ask, what are books for you? As far as, yeah. Uh, books for me are uh, tools. Uh, it's a book, a book is made. Uh, a book is, is an, uh, you make a book because you edit content in a specific way in, in, an, in a sequence, unchangeable sequence. Um, uh, that's very specific about the book in, in contrast uh, or in, to the internet, to the flux of internet where everything can change. But the book is, uh, uh, is unchangeable. So you have to be very specific how you uh, organize uh, the content. And then you, uh, you make books, you print books for distribution to, to share information. But the fact that it's stable and that it's printed, uh, uh, that's why you make books for the future. You never make a book for the past. You always make a book for the future. And, uh, and I think that's for me a crucial, uh, crucial element. So that's what, what, what is for me making a book. So it's interesting because a lot of the a lot of the questions are also about how not just about you as a bookmaker designer but also how you consume books. So one of the students asked also, do you use your personal library of rare books for inspiration in your projects? And oh yeah. Obviously, when you're at the back, you're a kind of consumer of books, a reader of books as well as. I have a wonderful collection of that's called in Dutch Privé Domain. That's a, a biographical series, which is a, an amazing. Um, uh, you know, a, a big row of books, but I also have uh, books from uh, um, uh, in my library from 1500 and 1600 where I'm inspired by uh, specific uh, typography. This is really an interesting book where basically there's no grid and I, uh, the way I design, I also design without grid. 
and these kind of books inspire me uh, a lot. And this is an old book, but I also have uh, new books, or new 60s. This kind of books where, uh, this is a catalog for the Walraf Richard Museum, where, um, that's a book where there uh, are five, cop uh, five uh, editions. This is number two. And, and uh, the more editions, the thicker, of course, the book becomes. And this is a book with tipped in um, images. It's really beautiful. And um, and the, the portrait of the artist is always on the, on film. And I really uh, uh, like this this book very much. So so the books I collect, of course, are an inspiration. And and I really like uh, the fifty the the Renaissance in um, in the sixties because there are two moments in bookmaking where where it's free. Where there are in in the in the Renaissance, where after the uh, Gutenberg, uh, there are no uh, rules and and no conditions, and uh, and in the 60s there were conditions, but they threw it all away. So and if you if you see my, these two collections together, it 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 is very very nice, very attractive, and really. Uh, super interesting so i have literature i have science also science books are really interesting and of course a lot of art books because that's uh, what i'm really interested in could i ask you so what's your favorite bookshop where have you been delighted to see your books in do you have my, a favorite bookshop, books. Or bookshop? So, uh, you mean where my books are shown yeah, I mean, do you have a favorite bookshop? And like, yeah, I, I imagine you might have seen your books in that bookshop. Oh, yeah. What would I? Uh, yeah, I like these these not so big bookstores where you can also buy, of course, uh, antiquarian books. We have in, in the Netherlands, we have a bookstore called De Slechte. And that's a remainder book. So it's uh, and they have these departments where you can buy uh, Art books, and sometimes I see my books for a crazy price. Nothing <laughs> weird, and sometimes uh, a, a super expensive book for only ten euros. So, so to, to go to a bookstore where it's unexpected, uh, I really like that because, like, these books are sometimes super expensive, but sometimes people don't know what they're selling, and then it's super cheap. So, uh, so it's basically these little bit old bookstores. Uh, I really like to uh, to scan, and also I like like in New York you have Strand, and at Strand bookstore uh, I can spend there the whole time, and I look at every book, every book, and always I do a finding, always. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you're teaching in about ten minutes, Irma. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But, but maybe yeah. one book. Uh, we can scratch the surface. I feel like we could talk for another two hours about all. Oh, ah. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. But what I really like is uh, to show this book because the way I make books uh, is basically uh, this is a book in progress, which has all these. Uh, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, post it. But sometimes a, uh, a book becomes a real book becomes. Uh, a dummy almost. This book is is it looks like a dummy, but it's a real book. So and and that that weird mix of real uh, dummy or uh, printed or yeah, what a book is is uh, for me that's also interesting to investigate. That that the Margiela book, so the uh, Marta Margiela, who was before a fashion designer and is now an artist, or he was always an artist. That this. Uh, this book um, basically is, uh, it looks like a dummy, but it's a real book. And the post-its are the indicators for um, where a new project uh, starts. But it's a book with uh, a very sort of informal book with um, uh, fold-outs. I'm trying to find one nice fold-out. And uh, yeah, so this is a book where uh, where things become uh, are mixed. All ideas are mixed, and sometimes it, and, and with Margiela that worked, of course, uh, really good because sometimes we have 
foldouts, but, but sometimes we have fake foldouts. So I, I'm now trapped, uh, fooled with my own uh, project. <laughs> but uh, but that is really nice that this uh, this book, yeah, it it is printed, but it could have been uh, a, a non-printed uh, book. So there are also these these foldouts. But basically, if you see the book, it looks like a photo a Xerox book. It has all the, it's very, very informal. And also these post-its become really dirty and, and they will fade. And, uh, and that's also what I like about the book, that it has a, it has a life. And so could I ask you, what about what you're working on at the moment and in terms of the future? Just as a last question, because we do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tonight, uh, this book will be printed, the book manifest. So I did this one in 2010 and it's my own catalogue. It's really a catalogue um, with my uh, work. And here it's called biography in books because my, my, my life, I can uh, tell you about my life through books. And, uh, and this is uh, 2013 in Paris, where I had the architecture of the book exhibition. And now uh, it's called Book Manifest because I, it's a show where I show the, the models. And, uh, and you see that the book is growing. So every year, even if it's produced or not, it's growing 3%. And if I become 100, then the book will have this size. <laughs> so of course I made it now, uh, so it, it's a nice comparison. Uh, I made it now big because I really wanted to read the text very well and so there, that there are no mistakes in the, in the, in the book. But basically, uh, yeah, here I was, I don't know, uh, 48 or something. And uh, if the book is this size, I will be uh, 100. <laughs> I hope I can make it. You never know. So built into all books are time, as you said, they're about longevity and about, yeah, retainers yeah. and containers of like time, aren't they? And knowledge and information. Exactly, so. exactly. Yeah. And I love the enthusiasm that you, I mean, you've been doing this for 30 odd years and it, you still talk with such passion and such kind of <laughs> engagement about what you're doing. And it's amazing. So uh, we're going to have to wrap up because you do have to. <laughs> Um, but thank you ever so much yeah, for talking yeah. to us about what you're doing. And it really feels like we just scratched the surface, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, because we didn't even talk about uh, Otto Treumann. Uh, or, uh, Treumann, yeah. And I didn't even show Chanel, <laughs> which is oh. so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you but, ever so much. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. No, but and, and maybe that is what you see because I work so much. But uh, I do really enjoy it, and I think the the uh, the joy of of creating is is uh, is super important. If and if you make a book, if you can get the book made, what you envision, then it's so rewarding. So uh, and yeah, that 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 keeps me going. And then I think, oh, there's so many things to investigate and and to try, and uh, yeah. It is, uh, yeah, it is. Every book is different, as you say. Every book yeah, starts exactly. like, probably, like, from scratch, basically. Of course, I have all the knowledge, but uh, yeah. but basically, uh, if, if a new project starts, it, it's something new. And that is the, the, the challenge and the, and the inspiring moment. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. I'll just hand over to Marion, but thank you. OK, yes. thank you, Aiden. Yes, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Aidan and Irma. And um, I just want to say a huge thank you to Irma. That did really feel like there was no screen, and I really felt like I was sat opposite. <laughs> only staring at the screen. I was sat opposite you in Amsterdam in your studio. But thank you so much. That was just wonderful, really wonderful. Um, and thank you to all the students for the questions and Aidan for, for a lovely yes, conversation. Thank you, students. I want to say hello. I want to see you. But um, unfortunately, it, it was really a pleasure to. Uh, to share some uh, some thoughts together. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Um, and just to say, yes, thank you to everybody for joining us today. And the next uh, talk is Dr. Mariana Lopez, Enhanced Audio Description on the 27th of April, uh, 1.30. And yeah, it's just for us to say bye. Send everybody. me a link. I want to listen. Yes. And when the recording comes, I'll send you the link. Definitely. No, but also and for the next lecture.
for the oh, next, next talk. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 we will. <laughs> but thank you again, Irma, and have a really good rest of the day. Good luck with the book going to the publisher, to the yeah, printer. Yeah, to the printing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's really exciting. Uh, after yeah. it's, if you're making your own book, it's like a bicycle repairman or a shoe repair person. You always have to. My book is always last. <laughs> we should go first. Uh, it's always the last thing I work on. Yeah, yeah. but I'm happy it goes to print uh, finally. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. You. bye, -bye. bye.